Welcome back to One on One, New York's longest running sports call in show. Emmanuel Barbari joined by Chris Baccia, special guest, Fordham Women's Basketball head coach Stephanie Gately in her 10th season with the Rams. Coach, thanks for being with us. Oh my God, it's always a pleasure. I love being with you guys. Coach, the start of a very unique season. You had the win over Stony Brook, you had a postponement against Manhattan. How's the team been adapting to these challenging times? Very resilient group. I mean, I mean, I told him after Stony Brook, I felt that we had two wins. One, obviously the game itself, but two, having the opportunity to play the game. Just being able to win, you know, staying healthy, you know, and staying virus-free, so to speak. And uh, it's difficult. I mean, as, as the numbers are increasing, you know, my son's team from Richmond, after they beat Kentucky, just went into shutdown too. And I know how disappointed he was. And it just... Um, you know, it's it, it just, you, you've got to stay resilient and you've just got to stay patient. It's, it's changing every day. So hopefully with the vaccine, you know, on its way, things will brighten up. Coach, I want to ask you about a former member of your team, Bryson Kavanaugh, who came out as transgender this year. And what was it like for you as, as the coach and the leader of this team to be able to embrace him and accept him and move forward now without him? What's it been like as a team for you in this moment? Well, I mean, it, it kind of caught us off guard, you know, just because it happened when we got back and I was in quarantine when it happened. Like um, when Bryce, you know, left campus, I, you know, I, I was coming back from my son's wedding. So for two weeks coming back from Texas, I had to stay in quarantine. So it caught me off guard just because uh, Bryson had been in our workouts and had done a great job and, didn't seem to be any issues and so it, it kind of you know took us all a little bit by surprise but the number one thing is um his happiness you know the number one thing like anything is, is for your players they're like your kids and you want them to be happy and and be successful and um if that's what makes him happy then you know then I'm all for being supportive from a purely basketball perspective you lose the a10 player of the year how's the team's approach changed at all if anything I mean, I think at first it's obviously a gut check because, you know, Bree was player of the year and, and, and now being Bryson, it just, it changed, you know, it, it changed. Uh, it, now we're, we score by committee, right? You know, like in the Stony Brook game, Anna had a great first half, Caitlin had a great second half and, and, and we were, that was a bright spot because we were able to do it with really Kenny not scoring. And so I think once we, it took us a couple of weeks to kind of adjust you know, our kind of mindset. And I think then once we settled in, I think the kids realized, and I think that the, the Stony Brook game was a great shot in the arm. I mean, they had the third longest nation's winning streak at home and to be able to do that on the road and especially after come, having a big lead, big lead, losing it, it kind of, I'm sure the kids all kind of started thinking back to the ECU game and like, oh my gosh, and be able to have them, you know, make that run and for us to sustain through that, I, th I thought was a, you know, a big step forward for us. Our guest is Fordham women's basketball head coach Stephanie Gately here on one on one coach flashing back. You mentioned the VCU game that ended last season, then the COVID outbreak. And then you really don't have much interaction in person with your team for about four or five months. How are you able to keep tabs on the group during that stretch apart? Well, I mean, I've always been a big proponent of communication, you know, and, 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 and this time we had to be obviously really creative. So uh, obviously there's a lot of Zooms, but in, in all honesty, I thought that I got to know our players better this summer than I ever have just because one thing, I made myself available to them. You know, I, I was calling them on a regular basis, reaching out on a regular basis, and it had nothing to do with basketball workouts. It was really about how are you and how's your family and what are you gaining that's positive out of this situation? And um, and I would tell the kids all the time, you know, we got to win the weight, you know, the, the weight of getting to play again. And the teams that, you know, stay together and, and, and stay in shape and stay focused. And I thought the staff did an incredible job. I mean, they reached out and found out 
um, what each player had access to at their house, you know, what kind of weights or did they have a, a basket and they made the workouts according to what the players had. And um, so I, I think we answered the bell, so to speak, as far as being um, creative and being patient and being kind, you know, and, and, and you know, these kids, it's, it's a whole new world. I mean, I, I've never been through something like this and, you know, for them, I think it is, you know, it's, it's challenging. And, you know, as you know, you guys are young kids too, being on campus and even talking to my own son at Richmond, it's just like, what are you doing? Nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing. Usually, you know, it's heading down to the bar, you know, or whatever, you know, on a weekend, but nothing. <laughs> staying home. Um, so I, I just, um, we did it. We did a call every week with the team. And, you know, when we were going through the George Floyd uh, situation, we, I thought we did a lot of good things to kind of get more familiar with, um, that situation, it was eye-opening in so many ways, aside from the vi virus, you had that, and, and then you had the election, and so, you know, gave us opportunity to educate each other and become more familiar with, you know, kind of current event things as well. Coach, con continuing to be ready to adjust for anything, because you've already had a game canceled against Manhattan, which would have been Wednesday. Um, of course, Quinnipiac is next, but how what's your posture right now with the team being ready for anything to potentially change to lose a game to have to go a stretch without playing for a little while how are you communicating with your team about being sort of ready for any scenario right now you know what it, it it's basically saying day to day you know like every day like i tell the kids you know like even from a playing standpoint it's just be thankful we're here to play so it, everything we're attacking is a is a day to day. I mean, I think all coaches, you know, we did our third test for the week, you know, in, in, in line with what we're supposed to do for playing a game. And as a coach, you kind of hold your breath, you know, making, hoping sure, making sure that we're going to get cleared to play, you know? And so um, it's just, it's really about being patient. I mean, faith is a big part of who I am. So, I mean, there's so many things in this situation you can't control. So you kind of have to like make sure that you're, you're giving the kids the opportunity to be educated on everything. I mean, like Thanksgiving is a great example. Like, I know a lot of schools didn't let their kids go home. And I just felt like, gosh, you know, mental, we talk about the mental health of these kids and to, you know, to miss a family opportunity. Um, and I told the kids that, I said, listen, there's no way I want to take that away from you. But you also have to understand that it can't be the normal of going to visit friends and going to visit people that you aren't in your circle because you're, you're, you're putting everybody at risk, not just your team, but other teams and things of that nature. So it's really been one in which we really had to, you know, have some, you know, clear conversations about, but our kids, you know, as you can tell, they our kids really want to play and they respect each other. So they're all going to do their part to make sure we're good to go. Coach Gately with us here on the show. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the big season opening win over Stony Brook, the reigning America East champs, and you're trying to get the team off the ground and running here. And it's Wolf, 25 points, top returning scorer to your team. What was the number one positive from that game where you kind of had to grit it out in the second half? I think the fact that we stayed together when they cut it to one. I think that was the number one thing. I, I mean, if you had to say an actual physical thing, it would be rebounding. I was really proud because Stony Brook last year had out-rebounded people by 10. And the fact that we out-rebounded them and actually rebounding ended up being the difference maker as far as picking up an offensive board here or there. And um, and I and I and the fact that we were able to win without Kendall. I mean, Kendall has been playing super in our preseason practices and against us, our scout squad. And you know, it really affected our rotation because, you know, we've been practicing where they're on the court and so much of that game she had to be off the court. And so, you know, a lot of kids were thrown into the fire that nor wouldn't normally be thrown in the fire. Great example, Katie McLaughlin, like, played 30 minutes, you know. At, at maybe maybe all last year, Katie played 30 minutes. So in the one, first game, she's playing 30 minutes. So I think different kids stepped up to the challenge. And, and I think that's going to basically be, you know, kind of the you know the, the theme that you're going to have all year is different people stepping up in a, a different every different game coach you'll start your conference schedule December 21st against Davidson shortened out of conference what um, are you looking to do as a team before you start conference play what are your expectations uh, in preparation for the conference schedule well like I told the kids in the circle today I mean we wanted to make it as difficult as we could within the parameters of what we were dealing with. We had to, you know, make day trips, right? So like um, we weren't, we were asked not to do any overnights and out of conference schedules. So 
you're trying to get a, a balance of com- a strong competitiveness with also building you know, building your team. So st- starting at Stony Brook was a good test. I mean, going to Quinnipiac is another great test. I mean, um, and then we have Fairleigh Dickinson coming in. Then we're at Seton Hall, which is another big test. And then we have Hosper at home. So, you know, I don't know if we're going to have the, the window to reschedule in Manhattan, but we'll have five games out of conference that will give us an idea of where we stand. And, and I think all those games will allow us to know, you know, what we're kind of what, what, what we're going to see in conference play. Coach, we'll leave you with this. You had the the A-10 title season, then you go to the Atlantic 10 semifinals. WNIT had COVID not occurred. What's the biggest improvement you you look for your team uh, this season? When you reflect on that semifinal loss to VCU, what's your biggest takeaway on an area the team can grow? You know, just a killer instinct, you know, like a toughness. And it's such a nice group of kids. And I think, you know, I, I try to explain them all the time. I think I'm a nice person and I think my staff's a nice person, but are, are nice people. But when we step across the lines, we, we want to rip your face off. You know, like when I played, like, hey, if you're on my team, I'm going to let you know that you need to do something better. And I want you to let me know I need to do something better. And I think sometimes we're too nice about that. That's an area I think we still need to, to grow in because that that just means you means you truly trust in each other. And that's something that we're, we're you know, we're taking – steps in um and i think the fact that we're able to practice against our coaches this year due to the new rules with uh covid and having val on the court and munger and abigail that yesterday was her last day but in all honesty val in my opinion would be the atlantic 10 player of the year and munger and abigail would be first team you know just they're that good so we're playing against that competition every day and so therefore i tell the kids all the time we're not going to play better against better competition than what we're play, playing in scout and of course throw jackson in there um and so therefore you've got a you know you've got a really tough team you're going against on a regular basis and i think that definitely prepares us that's fordham women's basketball head coach stephanie gately joining us here on one-on-one coach appreciate a few minutes thanks so much and uh, enjoy the rest of the season well thanks guys thanks so much for having me i appreciate it. it's great seeing you guys and Stay happy and healthy. Quick break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes here on One on One.